Okay, let's meditate for a few minutes. There's a lot of noise in the background today, but just let it go through. You stay, you stay with the breath and try to make your awareness porous, so the noise not only comes in, but also goes out. And you don't have to make comments on it as it passes through. Think about your body. The, the reason people can hit your body and cause damage is because the body puts up resistance. Suppose that your body were a cloud of atoms, and they hit you and just went right through and the cloud could reform. No damage would be done. I think of your awareness as being porous in just that way, offering no resistance at all to the noise. As John Cha used to say, it's not so much that the noise is disturbing us, we're disturbing the noise. The fact that the noise is there is a very minor problem, but the fact that the mind has left the breath to make comments on it, that's disturbing the noise. And that's where the big problem is. So just let it go through. There's so many things like this in life. If you just let them go through, they don't do any damage. That's when you put up resistance that damage can be done. That this doesn't have, apply to everything all across the board. But this is one area where it's really true. The breath is there, the awareness is there. And other things can come and go. But the awareness stays solid. You want to have that kind of tenacity with, as you hold on to the breath. They have these red ants in Thailand, big ants, and they tend to congregate in mango trees. So every time you go to try to get mangoes, you're also dealing with the red ants. And they bite. And they bite so tenaciously that if you try to pull them off, sometimes their head will disconnect from the body before they're willing to let go. It's become a symbol throughout the forest tradition. You want to be that tenacious in holding on to your object and don't let anything else get in the way. Because after all, we are meditating in an imperfect world. If you waited for everything to be perfect before you could meditate, you'd never get any meditation done. So develop the quality that the Buddha called anupasana. It's an action of the mind where you're focused on one thing in spite of all the other possible distractions. Anu means to follow, pasana means to see. Follow the breath. Keep watch on the breath. And don't let anything else distract your focus. Years back, I came out of the multi-goody, and there was a bobcat, and it was standing still, transfixed. I looked over to where it was staring, and it was staring at a rabbit. The rabbit was staring back. So I watched them for a while to see what would happen. And finally I made a noise and distracted the bobcat. Its gaze wavered for a bit, and the rabbit zipped under the, the sala. The bobcat turned and looked, gave me a disgusted look and walked off. But the lesson is, if you let your gaze waver, you're going to lose what you thought you had. If you let your gaze waver away from the breath, then you're going to lose your concentration. So hold on and let everything else be porous. That way you can develop the mind even in unpromising situations. And it's ability you want to have. You can't guarantee that, say, when you die, things are going to be quiet and undisturbed. You want to maintain your focus even then. So get practice doing it now.